Welcome to Customer Tech Talks. On this segment, I'm joined by Kroger, who are using Java on Azure to manage stock levels in their stores across the US. But before we jump into the interview, let's take a look at the video. At Kroger, we believe in fulfilling every customer's need every time they visit our stores. But we can't do that if the item a customer wants isn't on the shelf. Our associates are diligent in moving products off trucks, through our back rooms and onto our shelves. And while they do great work, a cloud-based technology solution makes their jobs much easier. Whether customers are doing a big weekly shop or stopping by for fresh ingredients they need for their next meal, a few missing items could mean they leave frustrated. If critical items are missing too often, we've lost their trust and their business. Our tech-based in-stock solution puts valuable information right in the associate's hands when a shopper asks for help. Instead of searching the back room while a customer waits, associates know exactly where to go to locate the missing item. They bring it back to the floor and the customer is on their way quickly. The customer leaves happy and keeps coming back because they know Kroger will have what they need every time they need it. With me today is Doug Wilson, Senior Director of Software Engineering from Kroger. Doug, thanks for spending some time with us. Yeah, thanks for having me, Ben. So stock management is obviously a huge part of any grocery store. Can you share what drove your need to move to the cloud? Absolutely. I mean, we knew that we needed to rebuild. Our current system was considered legacy. The, the way we started actually was we started it on-prem, on Pivotal Cloud Foundry. But we, we only uh, scaled it or, or started it to support about 150 stores. Now, the reason we did that is at the same time, we made a strategic decision to go cloud first. So although the move to cloud for us was mainly strategic in nature, we also knew that the time and the cost associated with scaling on-prem was going to be problematic. Now, when we spoke previously, when we were planning this segment, you mentioned that you had an extensive process playbook laid out for the migration. Can you share how you built this and how the migration went? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, moving to the cloud sounds so easy. We talk about it all the time. Everybody's talking about it. The reality, at least for us, was that it was complicated. Now, maybe that's because we were in a production environment. We had to move to production environment. But you know, the way that I described it with our business partners was, you know, imagine you're in a race car and you've got to pull over to a pit stop. But instead of changing the tires out, you've got to change the engine out. That that analogy is exactly what we had to do. And to be successful, you know, it required a careful planning, a comprehensive playbook, and a great team. Now, it's not just about moving to the cloud, but you know, taking your pit stop analogy there, it's also making sure the car runs after you leave. So as I understand it, you made some pretty in-depth monitoring dashboards to ensure that the system was still running. Can you show us those and, and take us through them? Yeah, you know, absolutely. You know, when you're moving from production to production, you want to make sure that you're up and running day one. So we invested quite a bit in our dashboard and monitoring efforts ahead of the migration. As, as you can see, we were looking at things like front door, a firewall, spring cloud, our databases, we wanted to really have an end-to-end -end view of the dashboards and the monitor and the alerts that we knew we needed to have up and running as we made that migration. So with your in-stock application now running in Azure, everything's great. Um, you can look back and think about that migration. What are some of the lessons you'd sh share with other people who are looking to also migrate their Java app to Azure? Yeah, yeah, that's a great question. You know, we've talked about two already. One is that comprehensive planning and playbook. I, I can't stress how important that is to make sure that you've thought through that. The other is dashboards, just making sure that you're operationally ready to go. The one that we haven't talked about that I wanted to share was, you really need to think about what your architecture is gonna look like post migration. So for example, we spent a lot of time and effort moving our apps and our services into Azure, but we still were relying on data that was on-prem still. So we had this, uh, this reach back scenario through our network and our API platform and gateway to get back to our data. That caused us some challenges that were unforeseen. So I would say, you know, really think about your future state architecture, go through an exercise of potential failure points and try to mitigate those ahead of your migration. Some really great insights there, Doug, especially thinking about that end state and how that impact, impacts your systems going forward. Doug, thank you so much for taking some time with us on Customer Tech Talks today. It's been really great to hear your story and hear about how that's gone. Yeah, thanks for having me, Ben. Appreciate it.
Of course, if you want to learn more about running Java apps on Azure, you can find all of the additional information and resources on Learn at Build, or you can visit the other links that are on screen now. Thanks again for joining us on Customer Tech Talks, and we look forward to seeing you on the next episode.